A beautiful morning all there. Welcome to this beautiful live broadcast. This is the voice of Isaiah Phillips at King Tala. We want to bless the Lord for his love, his mercy, and his grace in our life. We want to appreciate his eternal love and kindness once again. This is a beautiful day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in him. If you are joining me this morning, I want to welcome you to this uh, beautiful live broadcast. I pray this morning once again that the Spirit of the Lord will take us deeper into the higher realities of his intentions. The Father has been so gracious and merciful to us. He's speaking to us in such a powerful way, in such a clear way, and in such a, a, a direction that I believe is giving us even a better understanding of the nature of the days we live in. So if you are connecting with me this morning, I want to welcome you. Welcome to this this orb, this Potter's Gate uh, 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 session where we believe the Lord once again to unveil truth to us like never before. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again. We honor and glorify your name. We celebrate your love and kindness. Thank you, Father, for your truth that never fails. Thank you for the way you have been speaking to us. Thank you for the things that you're doing in our lives, in our midst. Thank you, Father, for opening our eyes to, yes, the intentions of your, yeah, of your purposes for this new day. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to a place where we are able once again to recast our vision, where we are able to see things from, yes, your view from the position of that mountain realm life. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Holy Spirit, I yield to you once again this morning. Touch my lips. Help me to speak your voice, your heart, your mind. Once again, I pray for the grace, yes, of an oracle to proclaim and to declare your intentions, your desire. Let this word, O oh God, bring words of healing, O oh God, to your people. Let this word be, be a word that will bring, yes, position of hope and restoration, yes, to our lives. I thank you once again. I bless your holy name this morning. My soul, mind, and body are bind to you. Thank you, Lord, that my eyes are focused on you. My mind is focused on you. And everyone that will be joining this morning, may, oh God, the things that they will hear, may it change their life, may it change their perspective, may it change, oh God, their view, may it bring them to a better understanding of where you are and what you're doing in this season of advancement. Thank you, Lord, that your prophetic intention will continue to allow us to press further into your heartbeat. I bless your holy name. I give you the praise and glory once again that your truth oh god yes will cause us to adjust we will be adjusted by the power of truth our life oh god will never be the same again i honor you i glorify your name i pray oh god take your place have your way in the name of jesus lord have your way this morning in the name of jesus christ take your place in our heart be glorified be magnified be exalted oh hallelujah glory to jesus Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, I want to welcome you once again this morning. Uh, if you are joining, if you'll be connecting with us, uh, amen, uh, wherever you're connecting from, either you are on this side of the world or you are just about going to bed or you are just, amen, uh, enjoying the, the, the noonday and at your end there, I want to welcome you want to appreciate everyone that has you know uh, joined us particularly in this first this first session of this teaching that we did i just check i was checking the stacks this morning and i saw my word that we have had a major 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 uh, 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 listening uh, 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 you know uh, uh, audience and i'm so grateful to god that heaven is touching uh, you know my lips to be able to bring his word across to you so thank you if you've been connecting and you've been listening these are words i believe that heaven has ordained amen these are not something that i sat somewhere and thought of these are words that the spirit of god dropped in my spirit and i believe these words are relevant amen to our day to you know the nature of the season that we have we have found ourselves if we are not amen, tracking the heart of God and seeking to know the mind of God, particularly regarding the kind of you know, a, a event panning out around us, there is no way one will not want to give up amen, or throw in the towel or get discouraged. Amen. 
Yes, these are the days of the perplexities of men. The Bible says, Amen. That towards the days of his coming, Amen, men will be will be buffeted, Amen. There will be all kinds of trials and challenges, Amen. That will seek to want to hinder. The Bible says, if the days are not cut short, that even the very elect, Amen, may be compromised. But we thank God that as we begin to journey with the Lord and find His heart and His direction, that He's speaking to us, and in that amen proclamation and declaration we are finding hope we're finding strength amen our faith is being renewed our faith is being encouraged amen our hope in the lord amen is being reaffirmed our love for him amen is being confirmed again and again and so this morning i believe that as we look into this word amen and seek to conclude i believe that the lord hallelujah will give us a better and a more clearer uh, uh, insight regarding hallelujah this message because because this message to me i believe is one of the greatest message that you know we have brought uh, particularly i mean in this in this in this year this is something that i believe uh, uh, will help us to better adjust amen our sense of engagement and, and and continuity in the things of god we're talking about renewing our vision amen we're talking about coming to a place of the renewal of the covenant we're coming to a place where we are able amen to advance the intentions of god regarding Regardless of how we have come, what has happened to us, amen. We don't want to, amen, consider the past. He says, he says, he says, see, I'm doing a new, a new thing, amen. Don't focus on the past. I'm doing a new thing. And, and for, for us to enter into that newness, into that new day, into that new spiritual environment, amen, that we have been ushered into, we are receiving, amen, the right spiritual, uh, uh, if you will, instructions and direction that will allow us to know how to, not just to navigate but also to interact amen the, this new day and i thank god that one of the things the spirit of the lord amen as as revealed to us particularly in the first session that we did amen was to look at how joshua brought the people amen to the place of the renewal of the covenant amen and this morning we're going to be looking at josiah and these are powerful you know icons and, and and values amen that we want to we want to really connect with because if we can find amen the 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 the, 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 the if you will the, mo the 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 model and the methods amen if you will the technology the architecture of how men hallelujah journey with god through the crisis of time amen through the hardship of time amen through their you know pain and 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 sorrow and and and, and despair amen as they go through the valley of back as they go through Amen. A time, a season where everything around them looks, amen, uh, uh, contrary to what God has spoken, amen. We saw a new kind of leadership emerging, amen, and leading the people forward. And I think that is something that we need in seasons like this. I tell you, the past few days has been, you know, a, 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 a time where, you know, I found myself in a place of the breaking, all right, because of the news that one, you know, hears. You, you have people that you love that are close to you, all right crossing over to the other side just dying like that i mean and that will of course touch anybody particularly when you know these are people that you know they are close to you i, I, I mean handling those things it, it took it took god for me to be able to rise up and get to the point where i said this morning i'm gonna bring the word of the lord amen because that is what i believe the lord will want me to do but beyond that these people that i know amen the you know brother Derek and you know sister dioning and my friend Friend, you know, or a Otaya Amaso in Nigeria who also passed away. These are people that are very close to me that I know, all right, that you know they've been part of my life, I've been part of their life, all right. And, and you know, in, in situations like that, you 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 find yourself you know asking questions and wanting answers, yes. But I thank God that within the word of God, amen, there are answers to all of this complexity because indeed that is what God has been saying to us, amen, from you know, from the uh, from 2000 and um, and 19 amen when all of this pandemic and all these issues began to happen god has been speaking to us he's been telling us amen he's been preparing our heart amen and so these things are not should not be a shocker to us amen and we we just want to believe god that he will continue to help us amen to to find our foot amen on that 
righteous path on that path that will not be derailed that will not be you know uh, 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 you know confused that that will not we, that we will not go down you know to Egypt that we will not give in yes this is a time where you know we will mourn but in our mourning amen we will not be captured hallelujah by, by, by the spirit of despair we will not be captured amen by depression we will not we will not allow the spirit of fear amen to grip our heart amen and I believe this is why God is saying sound this trumpet ring this bell of alarm amen awaken my people bring them to the place of the covenant remind them of the things amen that i have done you know just before i came you know this morning to broadcast i was thinking about how david was able to manage 70 70 000 people that died in one day amen in one day 70 000 people amen of his people die why because of the sin because of something that went wrong amen within the heart of man regarding the instructions of god when we don't track god when we don't follow the directions of of god when we don't follow wholeheartedly when we don't yield ourselves amen to how god will have us live life amen there's always a consequence amen and there are all kinds of consequence amen that we we are challenged with today i believe that this virus that is killing people amen is as a result, amen, of people's mistake, amen. These are things that could have been prevented, that could have been, you know, you know, stopped and could have been actually mitigated to, to certain degree, amen. If we have leaders, amen, who are mature, who have understanding, who 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 know how to position themselves, amen, to push back, amen, the, the handwriting, the works of, of darkness. But we believe, God, amen, that as we a generation that is called the third day church begin to wake up amen into this new reality that we will connect with the grace of god that we did. we will connect with the with the mercy of god we will connect amen with the resource of heaven to know how to amen continue to lead amen the church to that point to that place amen where we can fulfill god's intention for our life and i believe this is what god is saying amen that there are still land to conquer amen there are still places to you know to to reach there are nations to reach for God. There are still lives and souls, amen, to win for God. There are still places, amen, mountains to conquer, hallelujah. There are there are things we need to build. There are, there, are, there are lives we need to restore back to God, amen. And we cannot, amen, in this season and in this time, we cannot afford to give up. We cannot afford to throw in the tower. We cannot afford to, to allow the enemy to have the last laugh. And therefore, amen, we will rise up and we will begin to believe God, amen, once again, to risk us us to empower us to endow us amen to establish us so that amen his church can continue to advance he said i will build my church and the dynamics of amen that building and the and the nature and the look of that church amen we will continue to track it as the spirit of the lord leads us amen we want to believe god for a new sight we want to believe god for a new prophetic understanding we want to believe god for a new sense of vision we want to believe god amen for for you know for a new position of renewal hallelujah we want every aspect of our life amen to be renewed you know i was thinking about this concept of renewal i mean joshua if you read joshua chapter one amen this man this young man was brought into hallelujah the place of leading the people of god in war as they as they as they march to us amen that land that god amen has given to them i mean everything about joshua is is a definition of warfare 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 this man amen is is an image is a reflection amen of of you know of of war he was born into war, but he was a worshiper of God. You would notice the Bible says that when Moses, amen, finished talking with God, amen, in, 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 in the tent, Joshua is there. So this guy is not just some guy who likes to fight. No, he's a, he's a worshiper of God. He loves God. But he found himself in a time, in a season where he just have to, amen. War, there are situations that you find yourself, you cannot afford. You can't say to yourself, well, I don't want to fight. I, I, I'm not born to, no. The, the, the generation, the season demands amen that you that you war that you that you engage hallelujah the enemy amen you you advance because if if, if god is demanding breakthrough if god says you have been you have been brought out of egypt and you are going to a land called the promised cana guess what you have to face amen the parasite the jebusites amen the canaanite amen all kinds of height out there that you'll have to face and joshua was born in that season in time amen he was the chief commander of the army of god amen on earth 
I mean, I'm looking at Joshua and I'm saying this man, everything about his is built up, amen. Is 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 designed, amen, to lead the people, amen, to, to, to engage the enemy, hallelujah, to break through barriers, amen, to go forth and possess that to which God has ordained. This is the generation of Joshua. So you will understand the kind of nature and character and person that Joshua is. And to us, amen, the end of, 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 his, of his journey, of his crusade, amen, in, in, in Joshua 24, we saw him, amen, summoning the people because indeed they had not finished conquering. They had not fully entered into the promised land. Hallelujah. And we saw Joshua, amen, sounding an alarm. God says to Joshua, gather, summon the people, you know, because at this point in time, many lives have died. All kinds of things had happened. And when you get to a point where you are forever battling, you are forever, you know, you know, pressing forward, you know, going against the odds, there's a point in time that you, you, you begin to lose a, a, a sense of life. You begin to lose, you know, the, living that dimension of holistic life, amen, becomes, a, a, you know, a luxury because you, 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 you just want to continue. You can't, when you're sleeping, you're thinking of battle, amen. When, when, when you're eating, you've got your, 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 your armories and your weapons, you know. You, there, there's no relaxation. That was a generation. That was a season of Joshua. There's no, there's no, there's no holiday. There is no, you know, uh, uh, strolling around because there are enemies locking around, waiting to, you know, to get you and to stop you and to prevent you from entering him. Uh, that which God, Hallelujah, has committed, has spoken. But a Joshua generation must be awakened, must be alive, must be alert. And if there is anything I believe the Lord is saying to us in this season in, 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 that we live in is that we have to become, amen, that Joshua generation. But beyond becoming Joshua generation, we have to inculcate, amen, every other grace and, and ministry that will allow us, amen, you know, to continue to keep our eyes on the Lord even as we progress and advance, amen, regarding his prophetic demand for our day. All right? That we are not captured and we are not just fixative on one dimension. I've said it before that this is a time where we need to summon all the all the all the anointing amen that is required for us to be able to fulfill in other words we have to be multi-dimensional amen we have to wear all the four face amen we have to understand the, the dynamics of all the sevenfold realities of God in our life amen we have to flow like a river amen so that we are not disenfranchised in one area yes is a day of war but it's also a day of wisdom hallelujah is a day of war but it's also a day hallelujah of sobriety is a day of war but it's also a day hallelujah of, of knowledge knowledge amen that is sourced from the tree of life is a day of war but it's also a day amen of empathy of care of love of of of, of you know understanding hallelujah is a day of restraint but it's also a day of war we have to understand all the various realities how to operate within this new day so that we are not captured amen we don't give the enemy opportunity hallelujah because we walk in ignorance. We want to walk in the full knowledge of the things of God. So in our journey earlier, we have been brought to a place of vision. We've been brought to a place of covenant and we've been brought to a place of renewal. This is how we began or a, a few days ago when the Lord began to speak to us. We said this is the time where we have to come to the place of rest. We have to savor this moment, amen. We have to we have to undress ourselves, amen, from 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 the from the fear and the doubt, amen, and the tiredness, amen, and the sense of you know a, a, you know a weakness and all of the things, amen, that has happened to us because of the continual battle, because of the continual war. We have to come to that point, amen, to that place where we are undressed because indeed we need renewal and for us to be renewed amen we have to let go we have to we have to say goodbye amen to the old to the past we when we come to the day of vision amen we have to focus on the things that gave heaven amen wants us to know for this season in time because those are the things that will take us further amen we have to believe the lord to help us amen to to to, to let go of certain things to, to to let go of certain experience amen and to bring us to 
to the day where we are able to begin to understand, amen, as the word, as the fresh word of God, amen, comes to wash us, amen. We have to, we have to yield ourselves to this river and, and, and be cleansed, amen, and be refreshed, hallelujah, and be empowered, amen. We have to come back to the point, to the place where we are positioned on the height of the spirit, where we can see things the way the, the, the Lord will have us see them, hallelujah. This is what the Lord did in the life of Abacoc. He, he, was, he was brought again because this man, amen, had been shifted, you know, when circumstances continue to press your life, where you, you, you are faced with issues left, right, and center, all right, and all you see, amen, is wickedness and destruction, amen, and, and perversion, amen, and the declining of nations, and all you see is ungodliness, and all you see, amen, when you open the news, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing good there, amen. If, if, you, if, you, if you allow those things to, to suck you in, amen, you will lose vision and lose direction and lose the sense of what God is doing. And this was where, amen, Abacook found himself the prophet of the Lord. And they had to bring him back to the place of vision. <laughs> he said, I will set myself on the height. I will set myself, amen, on the ramp. I will position myself, amen, on that, on that elevated life, amen. You see, if we are going to advance in the things of God, we will, we, will, we will have to move away, amen, from the valley realities, amen, and come to that advantage realm where we are able to see the way God will have us see, where we are able to hear, amen, what God is saying, amen, if we're truly going to help people in the valley, amen, if there's going to be victory, amen, in the, in the valley, hallelujah, we have to have a dimension, a company of people that are positioned on the mountain, hallelujah, who are seeking, who are engaging God, amen, it's from there that we were able to, amen, challenge the forces, the power and the spirit, amen, of wickedness, empowering people in the valley. I will position myself, Habakkuk said, on the ramp, on the watchtower. And I will begin to have clarity of things. Amen. And not be reactive. Refuse to be reactive. These are days where men can be very reactive. But we refuse to be reactive. We will allow the spirit of God to bring us to a place of renewal of our vision. We want to come to the place of the washing. Yes. We want to go to the place called the pool of Siloam. So we can wash. So we can come with, with new sight. So we can see. Amen. Well, so we can have clear understanding. We can have clarity into the events of our day. We can see. Amen. What is going on. Hallelujah. Behind the scene. That we are not reactive. Amen. To, to issues. To, we are not reactive. Amen. To all that is happening. But rather we are, we are connected via the spirit. And we are responding because the spirit says speak. We want to live our life in the ambience, amen, of thus here the Lord. We want to walk, amen, in that dimension of continual feeding, amen, from that which is what proceeding from the mouth of God. Yes, these are days where we want to depend and trust, amen, and hold on to that which the Spirit of God is saying. God is forever speaking. And in his speaking, we find strength. In his voice, we find direction. In his voice, we find leading. In his voice, we find wisdom. Hallelujah. In his voice, we find the capacity, the grace, the skill, the tenacity, amen, to build in accordance to that which, amen, we have been shown. Have you noticed that, amen, the ability to carry out, to function effectively, amen, depends, amen, on our vision, amen. Build according to that which you have been shown on the mountain so these are new days for us it's a day of crisis it's a day of death but it's also a day of life it's a day of lies it's a day of deceit but it's also a day of truth and truth is prevailing hallelujah we, are, we will have to make up our mind to choose amen on the side we want to be are we going to be on the side, amen, of the narrative of darkness, of the narrative of the world system? Or are we going to be on the side of what God is saying and what God is doing? Within the mess, God is doing something, amen. Within the darkness, God, the light is shining, amen. Within the chaos, within all the wickedness and perversion that is taking place, amen. There is a river, earlier that is being steered today. The kingdom of God is nearer to us than we first believe. Our redemption is nearer than we first believe. The activities of God in the earth, amen, supersede 
what the devil, amen, wants our eyes to be fixed on. I said the activities of God within your life, within your space, amen, is greater than, amen, the lies, is greater than the falsehood, is greater than the deception, is greater than, amen, the, 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 the things the enemy wants us to focus on. There's a fresh insight, there's a fresh level, amen, of grace and truth that is coming to us. But we need to be drawn by the attention of those truths. We need to give ourselves, we need to yield ourselves, we need to commit ourselves, amen, to what God, amen, is saying. What, Father, what are you saying for this new day, for this season and time, amen? You see, it's going to take a generation like Joshua that understand that when you, when you get to the point where things, amen, are not finished, when you get to the point where things, amen, have not been concluded, when you get to the point where you know that there is still more land to conquer, amen, and the people seem to be weary, amen, when you get to the point where you know that, amen, your day is about to end, but the people, amen, are just being awakened, amen, to their own season. What do you do? You need to summon them. You need to bring them, amen to a place amen of renewal you need to bring them to the place of reminding hallelujah, of, of reminding them of the covenant amen because you see like i said a few days ago when we began i said god is a covenant keeping god amen god is a god who who deals with his people via his covenant the reason why god cut a covenant with abraham because god knew a time a day will come amen abraham might want to compromise something might want to happen amen to stop to hinder to frustrate amen to try to truncate the things that god amen has promised so god had to cut a covenant the reason for covenant is that when circumstance looks negative when things amen seem not to walk in accordance to amen the, the you know the, the the plan and the and the and the desired objective amen that no that no 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 one of the party amen should give in or should you know should buckle out amen covenant holds together hallelujah covenant keeps together amen covenant keeps in rem in remembrance amen the things that has been set in view hallelujah that's the purpose of covenant that even if one fails because of the covenant amen there is a reminder and there is a continual amen Amen. resourcing of the promise of the things that have been spoken God cut a covenant amen with Abraham and through that Abraham amen he seed a typology of Jesus today amen can walk and can claim hallelujah and can receive the inheritance of that covenant and we are because we are the church of Christ the blood of Jesus amen flows and runs through us and because of the faith, amen, that we have in Jesus Christ, we are connected to the seed. And because of that, amen, we are people of covenant, friends. We are people of covenant. And you will notice that those who are tracking with God, amen, men and women who have journeyed with God on earth, amen, they understood the power of covenant. And if there is anything we need to remind ourselves, if there's something the Spirit of God, amen, is saying loud and clear in this season is we need to enact the covenant. We need to remind ourselves, amen. We need to steer ourselves. We need to be brought, amen, to the place, amen, of remembrance. And therefore, Joshua brought them to the place of Shechem, hallelujah. And he, and he made them once again, amen, to, 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 to understand the covenant that God, the Father, made with them. We are a people of covenant. And therefore disease, sickness, infirmity is not, amen, our passion. Does not define, amen, our final say. We are a people of covenant, amen. Whatever is happening out there, amen, is not our portion. We are out there, we are there, amen, to be a light in the midst of darkness. We are a people of covenant, therefore, amen, we will not give in to fear. We are a people of covenant, and therefore, we will not give in to disparity. We are a people of covenant, therefore, we will not give in, amen, to weakness. We are a people of covenant, and therefore, we will not give in, amen, to defeat. We are a people of covenant, hallelujah. Our sight will be renewed. We are a people of covenant. We know what God has said, and if we don't know it, then we need to remind ourselves. We know what God, amen, has given to us, and if we don't know it, when we are brought to the place of Shechem we are reminded earlier of what we have been given we are reminded amen of who we are it's in the place of, of, of covenant that our identity once again gets to be renewed, gets to be revamped, hallelujah, gets to be reawakened hallelujah, in covenant amen, you see that's why they say do this often, you know the, 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 the last supper, what you will call amen 
Yes, that's what they call it, the Last Supper, where you take the communion. That is, an, that is a point, a place, amen, where you are able, amen, to re, remind yourself. You, 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 you ignite and you, 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 you steer the spirit earlier of, of, of the eternal life, of the, of, you know, of the exchange of life, amen, that you have, amen, in Christ. When Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, amen, he died as you, he gave you his life earlier. Now you are living via the life of Christ and that's why we've been tracking the concept, amen, of returning to Eden. Eden earlier is a place where we, we connect with that tree of life again, where we eat, where we are resource, where we are source via, amen, the fruit of the tree of life, amen. We are not of the order, amen, of the flesh. We are not of the order of the fallen man, amen. The place of the covenant is a place of life, eternal life, amen. And eternal life is not some future distance. Eternal life, amen, is a person and when we walk in that un understanding, amen, we are daily being renewed. Even though the youth, hallelujah, may fail, their strength may fail them, amen. But those who put their hope and trust in the Lord, amen, hallelujah, will be daily renewed. They will mount up with wings like eagle, hallelujah. They will be able to see afar. They have the ability, amen, to glide, amen, through the storms of life. Why? Because there are people of covenant. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And because the blood, hallelujah, has been shed on the cross of Calvary, that blood is still speaking to their better things than the blood of Abel. Because we are people of covenant, we, we begin to understand and walk in the authority and the power of what amen, has been given to us. We are a people of covenant. Do you know what that means? Covenant, amen, does not have a time limit. As long as the covenant, amen, is, 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 is re reminded, hallelujah, of his purpose. As long as we remind ourselves, amen, of the purpose of the covenant, as long as we can keep ourselves, amen, in focus of that which, amen, that covenant has been ordained for. Guess what? Covenant cannot be killed. Cannot you? You cannot. That's why you see when people are walking in covenants, regardless of where they are, regardless of what is happening around them, regardless of the condition, regardless of where you throw them, amen. If the covenant, amen, is established, amen, in good faith, if the covenant is established in righteousness, amen, you will see them bloom. You will see them, amen. And prosper and if the covenant because covenant can be both you know positive and negative if the covenant amen is is ungodly is wicked is perverted amen put them in the midst amen of prosperity of success put them in the midst of some of the best you know uh, opportunity in life amen because of the ungodly covenant that has been made you will see them fail you will see them uh, you know make mistake you you wonder what what you've been given everything amen why can't you just break through? why can't no it's the covenant earlier we remind ourselves that our covenant is not with man our covenant is with our creator himself amen hallelujah and because we are sons today we have the ability and the grace amen to ignite the covenant amen to to, to steer the covenant amen to walk in the power of the covenant we, we remind ourselves amen that is not by might is not by power amen but by my spirit do you know that God made a covenant with the house of David because of the condition, because of the kind of person David is, God cut a covenant, amen, with David. He swore, hallelujah, by himself, amen, that David would not lack one on the throne. With all that David went through, amen, there were judgment, yes. There were judgment. God judged the house of David, but guess what? God still kept to his covenant. We need to remind ourselves, amen, this day, that we are a people of covenant. I tell you what I'm declaring this morning. I want it to sink into your mind. I want it to sink into your spirit. I want it to sink into your life. You need to remind yourself that you are a people of covenant. I remember sharing with us, you know, some time back that there are things that have happened to me. I just knew that hey, this could not have happened because I, I know how to pray or because I, you know, I, I did something, you know, super uh, uh, extraordinary. No, but because of the covenant, amen. Because of the understanding, amen, of the of the of the of the of the bloodline, amen, that I've been born into. You see, as people are born natural, amen, to family. Some some of us are also born spiritually, amen, into amen, some spiritual lineage. Hallelujah. And if you're born into a spiritual lineage, 
lineage of men hallelujah, who have tracked with God, who have walked with God, amen, who, who have shut the face of God, amen, who know how to connect with the things of God and that blood, hallelujah, that life flows in you. I tell you, there is nothing the enemy can do to stop you. One of the reasons why I believe that I'm still alive and I'm surviving and I'm pressing further, amen, is because of that covenant that, hallelujah, has been made on my behalf. Is because of, amen, my ability to, to realign, to locate myself, amen, within the track. You see, it's very important that we understand this principle that I'm just sharing. In this last day, we need to connect with certain people. We need to, we, we need to align ourselves with certain grace. Hallelujah. We need to connect ourselves, amen, with certain spiritual resource on earth. Hallelujah. You see, this is what the concept of fatherhood and mentoring is all about. It's not just about the, the influence of the person or, you know, the, cl the cloud around the person or, you know, no, no. It, it's not what the person has, amen. It's what they carry on the inside, amen. It's, 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 it's the lineage they were born into. Hallelujah. I know we are all saved. We are all going to heaven. But you see, there are certain people, amen, because of how their great-grandfather, you know, their forefathers, or amen, certain individuals, amen, in their relationship, amen, have worked with God. They can easily, amen, tap into that grace, tap into that same spiritual resource, amen, and procure, amen, and demand, hallelujah, and walk in certain grace, hallelujah. Mephibosheth was able to enter into certain reality. Because of the covenant that David had, amen, with Jonathan, his father. We, we, we need to understand all of these things, friends. The past of darkness, they understand this principle at least to a certain level. But we in the kingdom of God, amen, should, should have a better insight and a better understanding of the position and place, amen, of covenant. That's why the first institution that God established on earth, amen, is one that is established, amen, in covenant. Once we understand that our life is built and based, you see, the nature of the days that we live in, amen, has, has almost destroyed sacred things, spiritual things. And, and that is a front because those who are behind all of the activity panning out in society, amen, they know what they're doing, amen. They are highly spiritual people, amen. Yes, they are using spirituality, amen, to blind, to cripple, to limit, amen, people, amen. Particularly when we say we live in a generation where people really don't bother, they don't care, you know. After all, we can just do whatever we want to do. It's my life, let me leave it. I want to live my life the way I want to live it. There's nothing like that, amen. Everything is connected to something everyone is connected to somebody amen there is no independent life amen we are all interconnected hallelujah you like it or not you want to accept it or not there is a connection everything on earth hallelujah, is interconnected interdependent there is no atom, amen, on his own, amen, that can create, that can produce anything, hallelujah. There is no, there is no, there is no reaction, amen, without, amen, you know, you know, you know a, a coming together of certain components, amen, of, of you know, of, of, of certain matters, hallelujah. Uh, you know, even in science, they understand that nothing stands on its own. Everything is interconnected. If you want to see a chain reaction, you have to mix things together. You have to put chemicals together. You see, that is how God, hallelujah, shaped and formed his creation. When you study human body, hallelujah, you understand how the world is designed to function. On your own, you cannot do it. So for you to think, well, it's my world, it's my life, amen. There is nothing like, you know, personal freedom. Your freedom is connected to somebody. Your life is connected to somebody. Your grace is connected to somebody. Your resource is connected to somebody, amen. It is God three in one. That is the order of life. That is the order of creation, hallelujah. The Godhead is one but three, hallelujah. In expression, we have to understand that. The more we understand this, the more we see, hallelujah, and we understand how to live life and how to overcome, hallelujah, that one shall put a fall a thousand, but two shall put a fall ten thousand, hallelujah. One by himself cannot produce heat. But when two come together, hallelujah, they produce heat. Amen. A three-four chord, they say, it's not easily broken. Come on. More than ever before, we need to begin to enter into the reality, amen, of the spirit of covenant. And one cannot make covenant, amen, by himself, except that person is God. <laughs> Bring them to the place of covenant. Summon them. Gather them. Bring the people that are scattered. We can't make covenant when we are scattered. 
when we are when we are when we are you know disunited we can't make covenant there cannot be a coming together hallelujah there cannot be a productivity and advancement when we are scattered amen when the enemy succeeds in scattering us and is doing everything today amen to scatter us to scatter us in terms of how we think to scatter us in terms of how we think yes we are a church divided we're a church divided we're a church that is this disunited and they say divided divided we fall you want to see a nation fall no matter how powerful how invincible they look no matter how technologically advanced they are as long as they are divided there is no sense of vision you see vision is what unites us that's the purpose of vision Vision is what unites unite us. In vision, we have a common goal. We have a common fight. Alia. We have a common enemy. Alia. We have a common goal. We have a common fight. We have a common enemy. Have you noticed today that most of the superpower, amen, are divided? <laughs> I hate to use America again, but this is just the truth. China has penetrated into, deep into the very, the very government of America. Why? Because there's no shared vision again. Amen. You can have all kinds of parties, but if the party, amen, do not have the same shared goal of building and transforming and empowering, amen, America, guess what? The, the nation is going to fall, it's going to collapse. We've seen it, it's already happening, amen. There are things that, you know, this President Joe Biden has done, amen, that has gone down in history, amen. The children, you know, you know, children and their grandchildren will read about the kind of decision, this, even if they choose not to put it there. Listen to this. The archives will prove. History will prove that this man, amen, made a blunder. This is a nation that used to be known, amen, for its unity. And as it is in the political sphere, so it is in the church. And until we begin to understand these concepts, that God is speaking to us, the handwritings are clear, amen. We are all sitting in the classroom, we are all partakers, amen, of this lecture. And God is telling us, amen, it's time for you to start learning as we are summoned. He said, assemble, then Joshua, I'm reading, you know, Joshua 24. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel, all the 12 tribes, amen. The days where certain tribes say, well, oh well, that it's their problem, it's not our problem. No, 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 it's our problem because we have a, a common goal, we have a common vision. We have a common destination. We are all aiming towards the place called Amen, the land of Cana. Amen. We are all seeking Amen to 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 fill the, the the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. Amen. We are all seeking Amen to establish the kingdom of God on earth. We all want the name of God to be hallowed in the earth. We all want people to be healed, restored. We want nation, Amen, to be transformed in power. We want things to return to. The divine order. Creation is groaning and crying. And it's our calling, amen, to answer that call and to be the answer to their cry. But if that's not your goal, if that's not your mission, if, that, if that's not your mandate, then, then you do not have a share, amen, in this. Then you do not, you, you are not a, you are not partaker, amen, of, of, of this. You know, that's what Peter said to, to Simon, you know, uh, you know uh, 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 the sorcerer. It says you have no part in this ministry. Amen. Your heart is not right. Your heart has not been circumcised. You might have claimed that you've given your heart to the Lord. You might have claimed that you are saved. But as we look, as we scan through your life, through the grace and the spirit of the apostolic, amen, meaning that we're able to understand what the church is and what the church represents and the process of the objective of the unfolding realities of the church. What we have seen in you so far, amen, Simon, the sorcerer, you're not saved. You have no share in this ministry. And there are people who have no share. Amen. That's why it's a t it's, it's, this is a time where we have to. Men of God, if you're listening, we have to be able to articulate the vision. 
And the vision is no longer what uh, we cook up in our mind. The vision is no longer the extension um, of some the tradition, amen, of some churches that we, we were born into. The vision is no longer about, you know, our competitive, you know, attitude and, and you know, and, you know, and desire. The vision is not, amen, the extension of our ambition. The vision is not trying to do something, amen, outside, amen, what we have been shown in the place of the breaking. Have you noticed that there's a principle and there's a pattern of how God gives us vision. If you don't know that, well, you need to study Paul. When Paul earlier was relayed on the journey, amen, to, to Damascus in going to persecute the church, they gave him a vision, they gave him a mandate. There is nothing about flesh, there is nothing about ambition, there is nothing, amen, about human, human wisdom, amen, in the things that God gave to Paul. And that is a pattern for us. God is the giver of vision. A vision that projects a man, a vision, amen, that promotes one man, a vision, amen, that is all about our own thing, our own thing, our own thing, amen. A vision that is about competition, a vision that seeks, amen, to lord it over all. It's not from God. It is clear, amen, where, what, what the vision of God, amen. You see, in, in, in the vision we find, hallelujah, the value system, amen, that runs the vision and the kind of values, amen, we apply, amen, in fulfilling vision tells us the source of the vision is the vision from God or is it from somewhere else is the vision source amen from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or is the vision from the heavenly order there is a ministry a life that we are building that is pattern after that which is coming down from above we are not of the earth Bible says of Jesus amen he is the high priest he is the ascended high priest amen he is our is, is our chief apostle and he is the high priest who is seated at the right hand of the Father. And therefore, everything that we do, amen, is sourced from his position, is sourced from his life, is sourced from, amen, his, his, his instruction, is sourced from his direction, is sourced from that which we are beholding, that which we are seeing earlier. We do not run via our own ability. We do not run the things of God because we have the resource. It's important that we bring the people, we summon them to the place of vision. And if there is anything the Lord is saying to us in this new day, hallelujah, is that many of us have lost the vision. We have lost the instructions and the direction, amen, of, 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 of the vision, amen. Yes, we've lost it. And therefore, we have brought in our own idea. We brought in our own strength. We brought, amen. Now we are, we are recruiting, amen, you know, you know, you know a priest after our own likings, <laughs> you understand? Now we are recruiting, amen, you know, uh, uh, professionals to handle the things of God because we have lost the direction of God. Now we are reading all kinds of, all kinds of, you know, you know, junks. We, we, we engage with all kinds of, you know, materials to try to run the things of God. No wonder there is continual death in the camp. For 20 years, amen, in the days of Saul, Nobody was allowed to touch the things of God. The priests were not allowed to function. 20 years, nobody, amen, consulted God, walked with God, amen. David came to the throne, hallelujah, did away with the order of Saul, hallelujah, brought in the order of God, but they forgot, amen, that the priests themselves have been captured. And you know what I'm talking about. Who's that, amen? We, you know, try to try to wage the, the ark while the ark was, you know, was about to fall. And he had forgotten that no matter what happened, amen, you don't seek to help God. That God, hallelujah, is all intelligent by himself. That he, do, he does what he wants, amen. He, and, and that was a test, not just for Uzzah, but for the entire, amen, uh, 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 administration of David. God was highlighting something that had gone wrong. Who's the out of zeal, amen, put his hand to relay the act of God and he died because, amen, he had forgotten. He had forgotten that as a priest, no matter what happened, you dare not touch. You dare not touch and you dare not, amen, gaze into what is in the act. And he died. And David suddenly remembered that we did not follow the order. 
If there's anything God is restoring in this day earlier of, of recasting of the vision in this day of covenant, amen, is that we need to relocate the order because it is when we relocate the order that, we'll, that we will find the matching order and we'll be able to move in accordance to God's divine pattern and principle for our life or else there will continually be death in the camp and God is not afraid to kill people. He will continue until we restore the order. Come on. There is an order of the priesthood. There's a priesthood earlier after the order amen, of Aaron. But that order amen, has become obsolete. Amen. There's a priesthood right now amen, after the order of Melchizedek. It's not just about the priesthood. It's about the order. And in that order, we have to know what it entails. It's that order that heaven is restoring as they gather us, as they summon us. Amen. It is that order that makes us invincible in the earth. It is that order that makes us powerful in the earth. It is that order that makes one earlier to you know to, to to chase a thousand come on you didn't hear me i say it is that order that makes one to chase a thousand one shall chase ten thousand that order is important thank you so very much my dear sister judy it is that order thank you for joining we must understand the order. We are not going to go out of zeal. We are not going to run out of zeal. It has to be zeal and knowledge. It has to be zeal. My people perish for lack of knowledge. The knowledge is not the acquired information. The knowledge, hallelujah, of the holy thing, the knowledge of the things of God, amen, is the truth that has been formed and shaped, amen, in us. The truth that has come alive. You are my children whom I travel again in birth until Christ be formed in you. The formation of Christ in us is the knowledge we need to engage this third day. It's the, it's the formation of Christ in us that we need, hallelujah, to transverse this this terrain, this difficult terrain, this day of wickedness. It's the knowledge of, have you noticed that Jesus was born in the midst of the kings of the earth? There was a king that was born where, when the king of kings and the lord of lords was sent to the earth. Herod was on the throne. God is not afraid about the circumstance. God is never limited, amen, by what is going on, amen, in the environment. No. Listen to this. The stock exchange may be collapsing. The run may be falling, amen. The American dollar may be, everything may be co collapsing around you when God, amen, says it's time, amen, for you to be birthed. Hallelujah. When God says it's time for his intention to be revealed, he reveals it. Circumstance does not define or determine when the things of God are birthed in the earth. It's important we understand that as long as we follow the order, the pattern, build according. Because you see, when you build according to the pattern, it allows the covenant, amen, to function. It allows the things that God has spoken, amen, to come into. You see, there are, there are promises, there are prophetic realities, amen, that are about, that, that are waiting, amen, to come. To, to ally to come into our space, amen. But they are looking earlier for you know for, for the runway. There is no runway in the spirit, amen. They are looking for where we can we can we can bring this thing down. We want to we want to land this thing, but there is we, we see nothing. You don't want to land this plane on the grass, amen, because it's gonna create amen chaos. You don't want to land this thing, amen, on a rocky path. So you've got to be a jam the baptist. What are you doing? You are preparing the way of the Lord, you're making paths straight because something is about to be. I told us before, our concept of prayer has to change. The way we pray has to change. The way we engage the things of God has to change. Sometimes it's how we perceive spiritual things that is actually delaying the manifestation, the importation, the reality, the revelation of the things of God within our space. Because religion has built all, all kinds of false image, false you know, identity. The, the religion has, has deviated us. You see, religion will go amen, to the ends of the earth. The spirit of the Pharisee, the Bible says they will go to the ends of the earth to win a proselyte. To win a gentile. 
only to make that person twice the son of the devil. That's how powerful the spirit of religion is. You are engaging amen, in what looks like the things of God. But is wrapped in religious spirit. Remember religion is what men say God say. Religion is, is the idea of men, amen, in approaching God. That's religion. That's the best, you know, uh, and this, the most easiest and simplest definition I can give to you. It is God's it is man's idea, amen, of what God is saying. It is man's idea, amen, of, of interpreting, amen, what God has said. No, this, um, we, we think, you see, that's why you have to, first of all, amen, renew your mind. to have, for, um, for you to have a renewed mind, amen, you have to let go of your preconceived, amen, ideas and agenda. When you bring your idea and agenda towards the things of God, God never speaks because you have polluted earlier the channel, amen. If God is going to speak, God will have to speak through a mind, amen, that has been cast down, amen, casting down imagination and every high thing that that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. You have to bring those things down first. If you have an agenda or you have a preconceived notion, amen, of how you want God to speak to you, amen. Uh, your, your prayer and you've gone to the rooftop uh, and God says, kill and eat, and you're there arguing with God. Uh, nothing unclean has ever touched my lips. Uh, this is this is this is Peter that God is gonna use, amen, to be one of his voice, to be one of his leaders, amen, in, in carrying out his, in, his intention. And this is Peter are arguing with God. God is giving him a word. God is revealing things to him. Kill and eat. Peter said, nothing unclean has ever touched my lips. And God said to Peter, you dare not call unclean what I have cleansed. Get up! This is where we are. And this is what I'm talking about. That when we are brought to the place of recasting of our vision. Amen. It's not just about doing the so the same old thing in a different way. No. It's about completely. Amen. Throwing those things that we are doing on the altar. And say God we need this thing to be tested. Hallelujah. By your fire. Cast the vision. Amen. On the, on the altar. Cast the vision on the altar. Whatever that vision is. It could be a vision about you getting you know, a business. A vision about you getting getting a wife or a husband, a vision about you getting a son, a vision about you traveling, a vision about you, whatever that vision is, amen. Listen, your vision must not stand in the way of God's test because it is God's test that defines the approval. And how do you know what God approved? Cast it upon the altar of his fire. If it burns to ashes, then it's not of God. But if you leave it on the altar and all, you, all, all that thing does is to rise as a smoke unto God as a sweet smelling savour, then you know God has spoken. Never be afraid. When we bring the people to the place of summoning, we must all cast our vision down. All the 12 tribes must cast their vision no matter what you have been mandated no matter amen what you call yourself or what people call you you can be called a bishop amen it's not my issue you can be called an apostle a prophet you can be called God knows what amen you can be the CEO of a company you can be God knows what but this is the day God says recast the vision hallelujah that's how you know if indeed you are going forward or you're going backwards because at, in this moment in time, there are things that God is discarding. There are ministry God God is discarding. And there are ministry that God is refiring. God is recasting. Amen. They want to recast it. But well, for them to recast, they have to throw the old in the fire. You throw the silver in the fire. Amen. And you separate the crucible earlier from the real thing. So don't cast away your confidence because you're going through a time, amen, is a time where we have been called to the place of renewal. Renewal is not an easy thing because you will have to yield to a new concept of life. Renewal is a place of change. Renewal is a place of change, not just about amen, uh, 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 refurbishing, is a place of total change, transformation. Renewal is about transformation, transformation of vision, transformation, amen, of lifestyle, transformation, amen, of lifestyle, transformation, amen, of, of pattern of thinking, transformation of who you are, amen. In the day of recasting of vision, amen, they begin to deal with your blind spots. 
they begin to deal with our blind spots. In the place of recasting of the vision, amen, we need to relocate new things. Oh, Jesus, help us. Joshua 24. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel in Shechem. I told you what Shechem means. Let me take you back again to Shechem. We said the word Shechem, amen, means the neck. This is literally from, amen, your Greek concordance. Shechem means the place of the neck, the neck, amen. The place between shoulders, amen. The neck, the place between shoulder, amen. Remember the Bible says, amen, the government will rest upon his shoulder. His shoulder, if you will, is the church. Christ is the head. But between, amen, the head and the shoulder, there is the neck. And this neck area defines so many things about the destiny of the church. You see, Christ can be the head. We can be the body. But if we don't understand the joining part, if we don't understand how, amen, this head and body flows, you see, the head plays a major role, amen. Without the head, you will not be able to function. In fact, without the, you know how back in the days, where they, how they kill people, they chop off their neck. In those mendeval days of judgment, amen, that's one easy way to, to judge people. They just chop their, because when you, you, you severe the person from his head, this is, this is the most barbaric thing. I mean, but this is how back in the days, people are killed. Because life, amen, that flows from the body or from the head, amen, flows through the neck is the joining part is the connecting part anything you want to do in life requires amen that connecting part you want to go into a business you need a connecting part somebody must connect you amen barnabas was a neck earlier it is the shechem of the of the church amen and 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 the new grace and gifting god was bringing by the by the name paul amen they could not because amen they have they have not learned Certain things, certain dynamics about the neck. The neck, Shechem. The neck represents hallelujah, the place of burden. The crown that rests on, on, on the head, the leadership crown, hallelujah, is carried by the weight of the neck. The weight hallelujah, is felt amen, in the neck. The tribe, the nation of, of, of God that is inscribed upon amen, the, 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 the chest, amen, the, 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 you know, the garment, the effort of, of the priest, hallelujah, is connected to the head. Everything that we represent as, as humans, as ministry, amen, is connected to the neck. But the neck is something that we need to understand properly. Shechem, the place of burden. Is a place of the heel. You see, is a place of the heel is elongated. I'm I'm just reading. It's a heel. We want to possess certain realities. We want to enter into certain dimension. We want to come into certain spiritual knowledge, power, authority, position. We have to we have to know how to flow things up. People shall say on that they come, let us go up. For you to go up, amen, to headship, to Christ, you have to go via, amen, the neck. is a heel. is a place where things are determined. What is my point? Joshua brought the people. This was his last mission. Joshua brought the people to Shechem. Joshua brought the people to Shechem. Yes, the Lord must deliver us from religion. Religion is a terrible thing. Unfortunately, a lot of people preaching and talking about religion themselves are captured by that spirit. Religion is one of the most complex spirits. Because the Bible says, in that day, amen, men will be killing in the name of the Lord. Amen. They will be killing the people of God. And they will actually literally believe that they are doing God a favor. 
You see, religion is one of the most strongest, one of the most, in fact, if it is not the most, if it's not the, the, the most strongest and the most powerful, amen, uh, 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 demonic spirit. Because you can be doing something that looks right, that seems right, amen, but is, is motivated by religion. But you are persuaded that you're actually pleasing God. You're persuaded that what you're doing, amen, is, is, is glorifying God. So how do you repent from such a thing when you when you have come to conclude and believe that you're serving God. That was the Pharisee. The, excuse me, the Pharisee. And this is the reason why the Pharisee refused amen, to repent. Refused to acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because they thought amen, that they are actually pleasing God. Why? Because they believe that they are the custodian of the things of God. That if God is ever going to move in the earth. That if God is ever going to do anything. He will have to do it through them. Certain churches, amen, are working like that. Now God cannot do anything, amen, in the city without us. They think that because they have positioned themselves in certain places, because they've bought certain properties, because they have connected with people in government, because they know God knows where, they have God knows where, they think that gives them the right and the access to define themselves, amen, as the voice in the city. No, no. People are trooping to the wrong place trying to find God's voice. They don't know that they're in the house of torture. They're in the house of tradition, religion. They're in the house. Amen. There are multitude, multitude. I mean, a, a person journey all the way from, you know, from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to go worship God. And listen to this. Even his worship is not allowed to enter into the holy, you know, the holy place. He's not allowed to even enter the temple. Because he's a gentle, amen. So he's outside, he's outside the temple. All right. But he's lo he loved God. He wants to worship God. He wants to serve God. Many people are like the Ethiopian Enoch. I know a lot of well educated, highly skilled people, amen. You know, entrepreneurs, people who are career people, going to church to find, you know, God, going to church to, to find, you know, his voice, his will, his purpose for their life. But guess what? They have gone to the wrong place. They've gone to the wrong place because the size of the church does not define and determine amen, the voice of God there. I don't want to mention them. I was almost tempted to mention some name, but God help me. I want to cause some churches out. And these people have kept, I mean, you are. You sit over company. You sit over banks. You sit over, you know, uh, 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 you know, some big business. You are there. And they are making decisions. But on Sunday, you lose your brain. You lose your mind. You cannot see that this man that is speaking is using you. The voice of God, the word of the Lord is not with him. You can't see it. Because he says he's religious. Because he says the apostle is the, is the geo. He's the prophet. He's the bishop. Come on. This is the time God wants to. This is why God said in the book of John, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Not just on some elders, not just <coughs> on some few, you know, uh, 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 elites, elite group. Am I saying there are no leadership? I never said that. There are still leadership. There will always be leadership. What we're talking about is the ability to track. To track. I mean, there are people following me today. Who, are, who we are resourcing their life spiritually and they know what I am. They know that I don't have a spoke. <laughs> you understand? But they see something in me. You see, that was what Elisha saw in Elijah. You don't follow a, you know, a grace or a gift, amen, because of the gift. No, no. You follow, hallelujah, the authenticity and the hand of God upon such a person. There are certain gifts that does not allow us to live life in a certain way. There are certain things I don't do. There are certain things I don't have. Not because I can't do them. Not because I can't have those things. But because of the grace and the, and the call of God upon my life. Because of the character, the uniqueness of God's hand upon my life. Certain things are not permitted. They may be lawful, but they're not expedient. Do you understand this? All things are lawful. But we don't live from that dimension. If we're going to exceed. Amen. The righteousness of the Pharisee. We have to live from that order. Is it expedient? Is this. They said. Is this the time to take money? 
the servant chased the general from Syria. <laughs> uh, my, my, my master has changed his mind. He said, that, that garment you brought, you know, that gold you brought, uh, he, he, he said you should give me some. He's changed his mind. You know, you know the story. <laughs> when he came back, Elisha said, where have you been? He said, well, I'm just behind there somewhere. He said, you're lying. He said, it's, it's not my heart and my spirit with you. When you stand before, before, the, before the general of Assyria, as you have collected those things, also take his leprosy. <laughs> Friends, we have to understand the nature of the days we have been called into. The voice of the Lord is loud and clear to us. The nature of the days we live in demands that we prioritize our life as we have been summoned to the place amen of of sacredness as we have been called to the place amen of of divine amen uh, 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 confluence we have to begin to look into our life and ask ourselves how do we go amen from here what are the things that matter to god what are the priorities of god the priorities of god must be our priority not your own thing you want to do your own thing in this last day you don't have grace and you don't have enough time to do that you have to align yourself amen to the demand of god to the speakings of god to the requirements of god to the dealings of god and you have to respond quick and fast you can't repent if you have no neck because to repent means to turn let me repeat what i've just said you cannot repent if you have no neck because the, the term repent means to turn. Repentance is turning. You can't face here and be turning. If you're going to turn, your neck must agree with your body. And your body must agree with your neck. Guess what you want to turn? You have to go this way. It has to be complete turning. Not one part turning. You want to turn to God. But your body is still facing the other direction. That is, that is Balaam. Balaam want to please God, but he's been captured earlier by the good money of Balak, the king. The king said, I'm going to pay you well. Just come and proclaim a curse. Just come and proclaim a curse. Many, many people today are in the house of Balak. And Balak is employing earlier the gift of Balaam to come and put a curse on the people of God. You know, there are invitations. People have called me. Places people have come me to come and preach. Come and I say, I'm not coming. And they felt offended. And I know they felt offended. Why? Because God has not given me the mandate. And I remember back in the days when, in Nigeria, you know, some of these big churches, non-churches, very powerful churches in terms of, you know, their influence and position. And then they will invite me and I'll tell the pastor, I hope uh, 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 you understand what you're trying to do. Because the things that I'm saying, that I'm going to be saying, may not agree, amen, with your denomination, with the things, you know, your G.O. is talking about. The things that I'm going to be declaring may challenge, may, may, may go against some of the things that you guys believe. Then they say, but we know you, you preach the truth, come. And when I go there, as the Spirit of the Lord will lead me, I will speak and everybody, they will, it's like they almost collapse from their chair. And I just walk. When I'm done, I'm gone. And they will still bless me with good money, thinking that that will change me. Then they invite me again. I still declare the word of God. And I remember there was a particular time I said to myself, I'm no longer going to this particular churches again, den denomination. I'm not going to go there. And the Lord rebuked me. After a while, I said, go. Perhaps there are people there, amen, who still have the neck to turn. Perhaps there are still seed there, amen. After all, Peter, amen, Saul of Tarsus, amen, was still doing his thing. And God was ready to use him. And when God finally, you know, it collided with him, the church would not even have anything to do with him because they knew who, who this guy was. But thank God for a Barnabas. You see, we want to function in that position of a mature, earlier apostolic grace. That is called Barnabas. Amen. Yes. But my point, amen, is that there are certain ministry, houses, places, amen, that are run by King Balak. Balak is a king. He's a resource. He has money. He has influence. But he doesn't have the approval of God. 
He doesn't have the presence of God. So what he does is he go looks for the Balaam. Balaam is young. He's got grace. He's got gift. And the hand of God is upon him. He's anointed. He's on fire for God. He can pray. But he doesn't have money. He doesn't have a nice car. He's not living in those, you know, one of those places. He doesn't have all the nice things that, you know, people use to affirm and to define their arrival. But his Balaam has been called. Yes, the ability. I mean, Balaam, Balaam's prophetic insight is deep. He saw, this guy saw the second coming of Jesus. Back in his day. You see, there are certain, you know, prophetic sight, grace and capacity that can see beyond certain radius. But not Balaam. Balaam can see deep into the future. He didn't see just you know, the first coming. He saw the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is how deep. But guess what? Balak does not give up. Balak does not say, does not take no. When Balak wants Balaam, God help Balaam. Zababa. I'm talking about bringing them, summoning the people to the place that is called Shechem. Lord, we can't get past Shechem. I thought I was going to go into the order of Josiah this today. I thought I was going to conclude this morning. Because that was my desire. I want to conclude this morning so we can move on. But it seems we're going to have another part three. Because Josiah is a whole order of his own. Josiah, amen, at the age of eight, at the age of eight, came to the throne. It's a new order. It's a new beginning. Josiah is the order of a new day. So I'm not even going to touch that, that now. I'm going to leave it for part three and then we're done by God's grace. You understand, friends? Joshua was about to finish his course. But he will not finish his course, amen, without laying these values down. He brought them to Shechem. He brought them to the hill. He brought them to the height of the spirit. He brought them to a place where they will have to engage. They will have to decide. They will have to make up their mind. That despite what is happening around them. Amen. They will have to decide for themselves the way forward. As God used Joshua to lay bare. Amen. The days ahead. And I, lo I, I love this man, Joshua. You think this man is just a warrior. He doesn't have a sense of history. You think this guy, Joshua, is just a fighter. He has no sense of, of, of the skill to understand, to read, and to, to pick into amen, the history of God's prophetic calendar for his people. It took them amen, deep down the days of the father of Abraham. It didn't stop in Abraham. Abraham is the point and place, amen, where people, people, people start when you talk about the things of God. You start from the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Uh, Joshua said, no, even Abraham had the father. This thing began, amen, with the father of Abraham. Hallelujah. And he began to speak to them. Let me show you this. Joshua in, in, in chapter 2. Joshua said to all the people. This is what the Lord the God of Israel. This is how you cut a covenant. You cut a covenant by bringing the people to remember. But you see because you can't cut a covenant twice. Once a covenant is cut, it's cut. People can forget it. What you need is a priest. That, amen. One of the functions of the priest amen, is to remind the people. Is to bring the people. He said do this often. <laughs> You see, there are certain things I don't do religiously. One of them, amen, is taking the table of, of the bread. The Passover, you know, uh, uh, concept. I don't take it for granted. I don't do it anyhow. Some people do it, you know, almost every, every day. Because the scripture says, do this in, in remembrance of me. You're doing that, but you're not actually remembering because, amen, you are not discerning the body, but you're doing it, amen. You're breaking bread, amen, but you are not discerning. You don't understand where God is and what God is doing within his body in terms of his prophetic, hallelujah, intention. 
You can't even cut, amen. Alleluia, the, the, you know, the, 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 the Passover, alleluia, uh, uh, table. You can't, you can't eat the Passover table if you don't have, amen, insight into God's prophetic, alleluia, calendar. Remembering him does not mean, alleluia, that you're thinking of Jesus Christ. Jesus will remember you today. That you must do, alleluia, as a lifestyle. But that's not what that scripture is talking about. He said, do this, amen, as often you do it, amen, you remember me, hallelujah, and that remembrance, amen, steers the life, the power of the covenant that is done via the blood. That is the most sacred thing a believer can do as a New Testament uh, follower. I've been to certain places. Every Sunday, they must take communion. I said, what's going on here? You've turned this thing to ritual. This thing, <laughs> this thing was never designed to be ritual. You see, that's what religion does. Religion takes sacred things, amen, and ritualize them. There's an acquaintance, acquaintance friend of mine the last time I was in, was it the last time I was in Johannesburg? <laughs> every time this guy wants to go out, every time he wants to go out in his car, with his car, it takes communion. <laughs> it takes communion. I said, <laughs> Mister, you've turned this thing to ritual. You cannot take communion, amen, because you are afraid. This is not some pill. This is not some talisman. This is not some charm. This is a this is this is this is this is a connecting point of an eternal covenant you have. Of an eternal covenant you have with God. Don't ritualize the thing. When you ritualize it, you lose its essence, you lose its power. How many times do you hear me talk about things like this? This is the problem. Do this as often. That often must be done. They are the leading. The Bible says anything we do outside of faith is sin. And whatever we do, we do by not being led by the Spirit, amen, is sin. So you can't just wake up in the morning and decide, let's break bread. <laughs> let's break our meat. That's ritual. Rit that's ritual. Religion takes sacred things, amen, and ritualize it. So people are going through the motion, but life is no longer there. They're going through the motion, you know, Sunday, Sunday service, but there is no more life because it's ritual. You know, when I was a pastor, I'll tell you this, as a pastor, as the Spirit of God will lead me some Sunday, I will tell the people, Today we don't have church. I said, we're not, we're not having church this, this coming Sunday. In fact, I remember a few times I told my people, could you please go to other churches? Go fellowship somewhere this Sunday. Sunday, huh, where the offering comes in. Sunday where, no, I tell them, could you go, go to your friend's church? Go and minister. Go hear somebody else. Yes, Isaiah Phillips did it as a pastor. So don't think this guy, no, no, I'm not just making noise. I practice the things that I'm talking about. Why? Because I want them to also pick things and see things. If 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 you are the only one they are hearing from from January, you know, to December, something is wrong with you. You're not preaching Christ. You see, you see, to build a body, to understand the functioning of the body, we have to be deliberate about it. It's not something that comes easy. You have to make up your mind. You have to deliberately do certain things. You have to deliberately take your Sunday offering and go bless another church. Yes, we did it. I could remember a pastor. One Sunday we took our tithe and I went to give this, not because this man is my spiritual father. No, no, no. It's just a man that I love. I took the tithe of the church. I said, let's go give it to that ministry. The man burst into tears. The man burst into tears. 
Because that was an answered prayer. Come When we want to see the day of Christ manifest, we have to change the way we do things. You see, like I said, you know, change is not renovating the old. It's basically discarding the old and believe God, Alleluia, for a new wine skin, Alleluia, so that that new wine they are pouring, amen, is not contaminated. You want God to do a new thing in, in your life, in your home, in your family, in your ministry, but you are still presenting the old wine skin. It's time to undress. I told you the last time, I said, when you undress, don't seek to reclothe yourself. <laughs> When you undress, don't seek to reclothe yourself. Let him be the one clothing you. Because if you seek to reclothe yourself, you will still use your own suke. You will use your mind. You will use your own idea. You will use your ability, amen, to, <laughs> to coat for yourself. The Bible says that Joseph's father made him a coat of many colors. Joseph was not the one that designed the clothes. It's not the one that defines. You see, when the father clothed you, he clothed you with every dimension, amen, of, of his prophetic intentions for your life. Don't you understand that that garment represents, amen, the seven seasons of Joseph? They represent, amen, uh, 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 amen the, the prophetic spectrum, amen, of, 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 of Joseph's life and destiny. Don't you understand that while Joseph, amen, was wearing that cloth, he was affirming something about his life, about his destiny, about his calling about his purpose earlier as one who is royal as one who has been assigned as one who will lead someday even when the tall the royal robe earlier the nature earlier the authority the value system of the clothes still abide in him you can't take the ministry from a man you can't jesus said when they want your outer coat give them your inner one <laughs> <laughs> because the real life is not in the in the what you wear. Amen. Is what is on the inside of you. Joshua took the people to the day of terror, the father of Abraham. That's where he began from. Do you know your prophetic history? Your covenant is connected to your prophetic history. Your prophetic history, hallelujah, carries the trademark, carries the footpath and the footprint, amen, of God's activity in your life today. You are not an accident. You are not here by chance. You are not here by force. Heaven program your life. Heaven ordain your life. Hallelujah. You've been brought, amen, to the throne, to the palace for such a time as this. Amen. It's your day, hallelujah, within this quagmire, within this hardship, within the number of numerous death that we say we have been brought, hallelujah, to such a day like this to bring a voice, to bring, hallelujah, clarity, direction. This is the time where our people must emerge and give accurate interpretation of the nature of the days. You're not here by chance. You're not a manifestation of accident. No. I refuse. So whatever you think about the virus, the vaccine, the government, it really doesn't matter when you are tracking the heart of God. When you are walking with God, you are always ahead of them. You are always one head, one, 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 one step ahead of the enemy. Don't live in fear. Don't let fear define your life. Don't let fear capture your heart. Don't let fear, amen, define the narrative of your activity in the earth. No, rise up and stand up to the occasion. You've been brought. We are being brought to Shechem. It's a place of renewal. In case you have forgotten. In case you've lost sight of the, of the call of the vision. In case you have lost sight of what God spoke to you 25 years ago. In case you forgot 
What God revealed to you, amen, as a youth, as a teen, as a teenager, in case you forgot how you encounter God at the age 12, how you encounter God at age 6, in case you're forgotten, the things God told your father, the things God revealed to your mother, the things that was that was infused on you by your grandmother, the, in case you're forgotten, how that person used to pray for you, in case you're forgotten, those things that the Lord, hallelujah, did and said, that prophetic word that came into your life when you had nothing. Now you are, you are somebody but you are forgotten. Amen. The reason why they made you somebody. You have forgotten the reason why they gave you money. You have forgotten the reason why they gave you that post. You have forgotten the reason why, amen, they placed you, amen, in that position. You have forgotten the reason why, amen, the brothers who were into your life, into your space. You have forgotten why they gave you the prophetic grace. You have forgotten the reason why, hallelujah, they gave you that grace, that anointing. You have forgotten the reason why they put, they put you in that, you know, condition. You have forgotten. Let me remind you, as you are being brought to the place of Shechem, as we have been asked, Assemble all the twelve tribes, all the priests, all the leaders must be brought to the place of Shechem. In case we have forgotten, Shechem is a place where we remind ourselves because it's a place of decision. Why do we need to be reminded in Shechem so we can regain, we can reclaim, we can be renewed? Those who wait on the Lord, Isaiah 40, 30, amen, shall renew their strength. Renewing the strength, amen, begins from, hallelujah, recapturing the vision. A vision that has been lost, hallelujah, cannot release strength. Your strength is in your vision. Your strength is in your calling. Your strength, hallelujah, is in your mandate. Your strength, listen to me, sisters, brothers, Everything that amen, your life is and is defined by is locked within the vision of God. Remember I told you the vision of God is not your own idea. The vision of God is not your own idea. The vision of God for your life is connected to a larger and a greater vision. To sit to his grand prophetic intention be fulfilled in the earth. So, while you watch loved ones, friends, family die around you, you know it's a day we are being called to come to Shechem. While we watch all kinds of things happening ar around us, it tells us that we are only given an ample of time to fulfill. The reason why we've been sent. We are all sent once. Joshua brought them to Shechem. We have refused to live our life from the order of Ephraim. Who have surrounded himself with lies. The house of Israel. Who have joined affinity with deceit. Judah that has become unruly against God and has gone into the point and place where he is perpetually unfaithful to God. Ephraim feeds on wind. He pursues the east wind. D day, and day and night he multiplies in lies and in violence. He has made treaty with the Assyrians. He has sent oil to Egypt. But the Lord is taking a charge against, against Ephraim and against Judah. As God continues to judge that which man has built with his hand, that which man has fashioned with his mind, we must hear the voice of Joshua and Josiah. We must hear this prophetic reformation. We must align ourselves and return. Remember, we cannot return if we have no neck. Shechem is a place of the neck. It's a place of turning. Turn to me and be saved, he said. God, after, after 80 years, 
after 80 years, God rem re reminded Moses of the covenant that he made with his parent. This is a redeemer. You are a redeemer. 40 years, Moses thought he was ready and prepared, amen, to handle the things of God. He killed a man, regardless, amen, of where that man come from. He killed, he killed. Listen to this. A man from Egypt, from Syria, from Assyria, from God knows where, they are all people created by God. And it's time we stop looking at men, amen, by their nationality. It's time to look at people, amen, from the point, amen, of the creator. Nobody has the ability or capacity to create a soul. So when Moses killed the Egyptian in the name, amen, of supporting his own people, God said, you broke the rule, you broke the protocol of ministry. We'll send you back to school. For another 40 years had passed. Moses thought God, God won't use me again. He had continued to live life. He had gone into marriage. He's now a shepherd. He's doing what, you know, uh, what many people do. He had a vocation. <laughs> he had a nice vocation. Making good money. Right? bringing food for his family and he's able to sustain his family Amen. he's working in the, in the industry of his father you know, father-in-law he was a good shepherd even though the father-in-law was also a priest <laughs> one of these days we'll talk about the priest Amen. in media Jethro was a priest and the priest of God he was doing his own thing but God, but God was ready for him after 40 years, 80 years to be precise. What does a man have to offer 80 years? <laughs> you see, because the activities of God are not defined and designed, amen, by human timing. Jesus lived, amen, three and a half years. He finished the work. He was out of this world. Yet, he's the ancient of days. It's not the longevity of time. It is the accuracy. It is our alignment to the voice of obedience. You see, when the time came for me to leave the things that I know, the things that I've built, the things that I've worked for, you know, I'm always proud that we began our ministry not breaking away from any church. We began with children, one by one, going from house to house. That's how I started. I started with children's ministry. Till today, I still love children. That is how I started. Saturday, I would gather children. These days, I still feel like that sometimes. Just gather some children. Because they are the future. You see, those children pull their mother and their fathers to church. When they start seeing, you know, change in the life of their children, they say, take me to that pastor. <laughs> Saturday, because we meet on Saturday. Saturday, they will come to our, to our gathering. You know, Sunday, they will go to their church. I say, it's fine by me. I don't mind. <laughs> but wait. The Lord is up to something. When it was time for me to leave, those young people that I raised, build up, I left them. Because the ministry is not man's. It's not mine. I'm not into ministry for what to gain, to, for survival. I know God will provide for me. He will sustain me. The people are not my sustainer. I love my people because indeed, they sustain me. They provide for me. They were there for me. Oh, Sunday, they will cook for me. You know, there's a young man. They cook. They bring all kinds of things. They, yes, sometimes they are in my place still late in the evening before they go to their houses. My house was the extension of the, of the church. We were family. We were family. Now we were like, we were family. Some lived with me. Lived literally with me. But when it was time to say goodbye and enter the next phase of my call, of my ministry, I had to. It was the most difficult thing. Living my spiritual family was more painful to me than living my biological family. 
Because they were all that I know. They were all that I had. They were everything to me. When I'm sick, they're the one that take care of me. They know me. But nothing could stop me. Nothing could hinder me. I make sure that everything that I could think about in returning to Nigeria was sold. I sold my car. I sold everything, everything. The only thing I did not sell was my books because I, mean, I don't sell my books. The ones I gave away, I gave, but the ones I, I still have some books being kept for me in Nigeria. 80% of what I brought to this country, amen, were Christian material. In fact, at the airport, one of the custom guys says, are you coming to South Africa to sell tapes? <laughs> this was what this man said to me. <laughs> you know, this immigration officer. He said, how come all this? I said, these are my, life, my lifetime work. These are my lifetime work. I, I still saw one tape here. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're watching and you don't know what a tape is. This is one. Hallelujah. I'll show you now. Because it's important that we understand. We have a generation that don't know what a tape is. That's a tape. I brought hundreds of this to, to this country. <laughs> hundreds of that. Just looking through my things here. And books. Few clothes. Clothes you can always. <laughs> What's the point? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. That's where your heart will be. Friends, it's time. If the Lord knocks on the door of your heart tomorrow and says, Time, would you be able to say, Yes? I akin to the voice of the summoning. I was part of the gathering. I was part, amen, of them that respond to the trumpet, sir. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, hallelujah. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Gather a solemn assembly unto me. Would you be able to say, we came out of that gathering, out of that order, reformed, informed, empowered, energized, reawaken now we are at the point of seeing the intentions of god manifest as i round up this session i'm going to come back later and finish part three because i must deal with josiah josiah I must deal with josiah lord we thank you you're speaking to us your voice is loud and clear as we go through this valley of Baka, the valley of pain, the valley of pain, yet, Lord, we do not allow the pain to define who we are, to shape our narrative. No. No. As we go through a period, a time of mourning, in this morning, we rise up, oh God, with new vision. We'll say like Caleb that we are able to possess the land. To possess the mountain. Lord, once again, I thank you for the life of Brother Derek, Sister Dioni, Pastor Amaso, my friend in Nigeria. These are people that are close to me in their own unique ways. Today I know they are with you. Their life is speaking volumes to us that are life. That we also need to align ourselves effectively. We must become effectual. The efficacy of our faith now must, yes, rise to a new level where it speaks of greater things. That we are not afraid of death, no. We rejoice in this because indeed we die daily. That Lord you almighty will be glorified. Either by death or by life. You will be exalted as you call us to this new day. To this place 
of fresh sight of new understanding as Peter said as the Lord has revealed to me that I'm about to depart out of this body of mine but I will not be negligent to remind you of these things though you know them but I will still remind you so you may be established in the present truth this is the present truth Lord we ask, O oh God, that once again our faith will be established. That our mind once again will be made up. That there will be a realignment, a reconnection, O oh God. Yes, a surrendering, O oh God, to your mandate and desire, O oh God. That out of this pain and confusion and all the trauma that is eclipsing the earth that a church will arise and shine because indeed our light has come you are our light you are the light that lights all men in you as life the life has become the light of men thank you god as the world are plunged into a period of depression fear and doubt and, and oppression and, and all kinds of you know spirits we proclaim and we declare in Jesus' name. Arise, O oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. As we pray, Jesus, be crowned king over the nations. We push back the works of darkness, we expose the spirit of wickedness. We declare, may your church. Arise. May your church be awakened. May a new order of men and women empower via this prophetic declaration take their place as we nullify and identify the spirit of religion. We come into a day of true spirituality. We engage your will. We engage your heart and we declare in Jesus name we are clothed anew with the garment of your holiness. Have your way, oh God. Take your place. Have your way. Infusing us the spirit of Joshua. Baptize us with the spirit of Josiah. Bring us to the place of a new position of leadership. Help us to be kings who operate via the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek. May we go forth, oh God, in the glory of your name. I thank you for my brethren. Thank you, Father, for everyone that has joined this morning. Thank you, Lord. I pray for my dear sister, uh, uh, Joy. I thank you, Father, for the life of Sister Myrtle, uh, Sister Tina, and many who are out there watching us, listening. This day we pray in Jesus' name. Grace, grace, grace upon you. Wisdom. Lord, I pray for the family of our dear brother, Derek, I pray for the family. I pray for Devon. I pray for Talo. I pray for uh, the daughter. I pray for Jake. I pray for everyone. Everyone. I pray for the family, the brothers of Brother Derek. <clears throat> the family, oh God, of Sister Dioni. As they go through this time of mourning. The family, oh God, of my friend. Pastor Amaso, his wife, his children, church brethren and athletes, everyone, pray for them. Grace, may they see the hand, your hand in all of this. The questions, the why, may they know the what. We pray for everyone. Grace, strength, wisdom, understanding. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Father, as, as we get ready, oh God, to lead them on and speak a word. Come next Friday, Spirit of God. He asks that this word will bring a word that will become like a seed in the heart of the hearers that will change them. That your kingdom, Lord, once again will be increased because of the decisions that men and women will make. We thank you. We pray your blessings upon 
Six Park Street. Have your way, Jesus. Be glorified. Be exalted. Thank you, Father, for truth. Thank you, Father, for lives. If you're out there this morning, I want to stand with you in prayer. I declare this morning that as you go out, if you're from South Africa, may the will of God be established in your life. May the counsels of God be fulfilled in your life. May your hand be strengthened. May the voice of God lead you. May the clarity of his voice, yes, become your persuasion in decision making. In the name of Jesus. And if you're outside South Africa, wherever you are, wherever you're joining from, you're watching from, ask this day that the blessings of God, the goodness of God, the peace of God, the knowledge of God grant you, yes, favor. May the keys of David be under to you. May there be a fresh anointing to understand the demand of God for your life as you are brought to the place of decision, the place of Shechem. Rise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I declare it is well with you. It is well with your home. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity. Amen. Will come near you. The Lord is your shield, is your buckler. He watches over you. He guides you. He leads you. Yes. A thousand shall fall at your right hand. Ten thousand. Yes. At your side. None evil shall befall you. The plague of this world will not come near your dwelling. You're secure in Christ Jesus. Your household is secure. In days of famine like this, your bones are made to be fat. Increase upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, we have come to the end of this broadcast this morning. I really want to thank everybody once again for being part of this broadcast. Like I said, I will be doing uh, the third session um, later today. I'm sure it's not going to take long. Uh, while you know I, I, I still feel the anointing to, to continue but I'm just looking at time so I'm going to come back maybe in the next uh, uh, two hours there about just need to refresh myself and then but I'll let you know when I'm about to go on air thank you so very much everyone really appreciate this God bless you God bless you God bless you thank you for connecting may God, may God continue to resource you may Christ continue to be establishing your life Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.